first of all i would like first of all i would like to welcome you all to beyond glass barriers 2021 we are waiting for our honorable mayor to join us so we will take a few minutes to start and delegates from across country and academia, a very good evening to one and all. I'm Pooja and I have Hanan with me. I feel privileged to welcome you all to Beyond Glass Barriers 2021, the national workshop organized by IEEE Malabar subsection, Women in Engineering, a golden opportunity to hear and interact with women personalities in leadership roles for both professionals and students under one platform. Let me give you a glimpse of Beyond Glass Barriers. The first section of Beyond Glass Barriers was in 2019 and in 2020, we had the second edition. The previous two editions of Beyond Glass Barriers celebrated women in engineering. The attendees could network and get a lot of knowledge about how to conduct research and technical topics to practical wisdom on how to handle stress. The aim of Beyond Glass Barriers 2021 is to inspire, empower, and lead budding women in the area of engineering and technology. Let me set the ball rolling and let's start to enhance the real potential. Once again, I welcome each and every one of you to Beyond Glass Barriers 2021. Now, let's have the pleasure of listening to the opening remarks. May I request Dr. Madhu Kumar ST, Professor in Computer Science and Engineering Department, NIT Calicut, who was also the former chair of IEEP Malabar subsection to deliver the welcome address. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Pooja. Good evening to all. So, uh, as announced here, uh, Beyond Glass Barriers, BGP, is a, a flagship program of IEEE Malabar subsection. So, this is the third edition of BGB. This is a national workshop organized especially for women in engineering. This year, IEEE MS has, has instituted an award for honoring women with excellent contributions in engineering. The award's name is IEEE MSS Rose. Recognition of outstanding services in engineering, that is the uh, expansion of Rose. MSS Rose Award winner for this year will be announced by our honorable mayor today in this function. So moving to my duty of welcoming the dignitaries to this uh, inaugural function of this event. Uh, let me, first of all, let me welcome our honorable mayor, Dr. Bina Philippe, who is popularly known as uh, Bina Teacher, who is the fourth women mayor of Kodikot Corporation. Earlier, Bina Teacher was the principal of Nadaka Government Girls Vacationary Higher Secondary School and Aichavattam Government Higher Secondary School. Madam has done wonderful work as a teacher and she has done a lot of uh, work or a lot of waist lifting activities for our uh, uh, Naraka government school, which everyone of uh, everyone in Kerala is well aware of. Bina Madam has associated with the activities of Women Empowerment Group of Student Affairs Council, SAC of NIT Calicut during the past also. And she has delivered, a, we had a wonderful session with Bina Madam uh, during the last year. I welcome Madam uh, to this function. She has agreed to be the chief guest and inaugurate this two day national workshop. On behalf of the organizers, I extend a hearty welcome to our Honorable Mayor, uh, Dr. Bina Fili. Now I welcome. Ms. Sharada J. Krishnan, the chairperson of IEEE Kerala section. IEEE Kerala section is one of the largest sections of IEEE under region R10, IEEE region 10. And she is currently the 
She is also the Deputy General Manager of Penapol Private Limited. Even though she is working currently at uh, Trivandrum, she is also basically from Kodikot. On behalf of the organizers, I extend a hearty welcome to Sharada Madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I also welcome Dr. Sabi, the current chair of IEEE Malabar subsection, Dr. Lilly Kuti Jacob, past chair of IEEE MSS, Dr. Bindima, Dr. Anu Meri Chako, and all other organizers of uh, this national workshop, BGB. Last but not least, I welcome all the registrants and participants of this national workshop. I hope this workshop will be a wonderful event and uh, we'll have very interesting sessions on today and tomorrow. Thank you. Over to you, Pooja. Thank you, sir. And now let's move to the most awaited inauguration. Honorable Mayor of Calicut has graciously agreed to inaugurate Beyond Glass Barriers 2021. With all due respect, I would like to humbly invite Honorable Mayor of Calicut, Dr. Bina Philip, for the inaugural address. Ma'am has also agreed to interact with the audience, so please put your questions in the chat box and we'll get to that after the inaugural address. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Suja. And thank you, Dr. Madhu. And, uh... Though I can't see, uh, just take this as an address uh, to those who are the members of uh, Women in Engineering. And uh, I like that the caption that you have given the theme, uh, though it is uh, metaphorically used, uh, breaking the glass barriers. Uh, just then I thought of a poem that I taught, uh, written by Langston Hughes, where he says these barriers broken with this strong black. So now I'm thinking is here we have a metaphorical one. That is those unvisible barriers. It is there, but we can see it physically with our physical eyes. So we have to break it. And sometimes I wonder whether those barriers exist everywhere in India, especially in the context. But to my surprise, you know, uh, Many of the metropolitan cities, when working there, they still feel seen glass barriers. The five people raised, especially the engineers, are different from uh, the other uh, schools. Uh, anyway, I'm so happy that you have formed one like this and you have invited me to share my experience with you. And at the same time, sharing your experience, I mean, with me, uh, I'll also be enriched. And of course, empowered. Uh, sometimes I wonder, you know, I, my memories go uh, 1997 when I was in uh, YWCA in Pirimbaur. There was a civil engineer a woman civil engineer. Uh, she was so uh, sunburnt uh, that, you know, people uh, indicated as a dark girl. But once she told me, teacher, I'm not really dark. I am British, but still, since I'm working outside, outdoors, I have to go up the ladder uh, to those structures, those building structures. And that is because, because of that, because of sunburn, people call me dark. And she was afraid because she was an unmarried girl. And uh, even she, even if she writes this medium complex or whatever phrases that we use in Kerala, people wouldn't believe when they come and see her. But now I think that you have so many other chemical uh, uh, medicines or drugs or whatever, which you can use to prevent your skin getting sunburn. So that way, you know, women working outside can escape. Others be uh, calling you dark. That's one another advantage. But still, it is there because in our society, we consider fairness associated with beauty. That's not uh, the right way to look at a woman's beauty or to look at a woman's personality. But unfortunately, 
uh, this is what's happening uh, in our society. And in that case, I, I do believe that, I mean, that's one thing. And we, among our colleagues, men colleagues, uh, when a woman says something, uh, if uh, her own uh, age people or her superiors, they refuse to accept it at first. I have my own experience in this context. Being the mayor with not much of an experience in politics or in, uh, uh, in, in a corporation council, when I say something uh, which is to be done at the earliest, people keep mum. Even my uh, fellow uh, you know, reps, reps, women representatives, they don't dare to utter a word, either a yes or a no. I sometimes wonder, when will we become advanced and progressive? We women ourselves are afraid to support something really worth. A typical example is three or four people came forward offering they'll build bathrooms or toilets units for all people for men and women if corporation provide space for them so it was a good offer but nobody nobody and i brought them in at that time because i was you know my, my experience as a councillor mayor was the first so i didn't dare to tell you the truth and after that i openly asked what is it that prevents you from giving us the permission at least? So then now we are, you know, we have decided that we will move to forward together. Like another uh, uh, standing committee chairperson, she also shared the same view with me. And then was a poo in the meeting. And she said, she was afraid. Just see, even if you are given power and position, even if you can express your own opinion, you can support or, you know, you can say no, but people don't dare to do it. So that is our plight. From that kind of psychological inferiority, we have to come up with our own opinions. That's my sincere advice. Your opinions need not be an angry, uh, you know, statement. It need not be an outbursting uh, of your emotions. It can be very quiet. It can be very gentle, but it should have the force of your decision or your opinion. With that kind of a language, we have to modulate our own speech, our own speeches. In what way can we win the attention and respect of others, especially in a group? We suppress our emotions and we burst out at the you know, uh, what I might say, at the, at the wrong, uh, wrong uh, places. That's what we do sometimes. So we have to train ourselves. We have to modulate our voices when you are in a position. Otherwise, you know, it's very easy for other people to irritate us. That's one way of provoking us. They irritate you so that you sometimes burst out. Then, you know, you lose your respect. It happens sometimes. I have my own experience. Another thing is, as, as you told, breaking the glass barrier. The barrier is there. But sometimes we have to pretend as if we haven't noticed the barrier. You behave as a person, not as a woman. That's from my own experience. I, being a woman who's very sensitive, very emotional, I pretended as if I am very tough. That could have been a self-defense for a person like me. I became a teacher because I was afraid whether someone would take it once or you know, they would bank or any other office because my father had somehow inculcated a feeling that the best place for a woman is the field of teaching. So that's how I became a teacher. And then even in teaching, you know, in my experience, I never had uh, very bitter, many bitter experiences as teacher. Though I had uh, one like that, and, you know, that was not that, uh, you know, uh, 
dilemma that did not create any kind of dilemma for me since I told that person behave yourself. That's the only phrase that I used to him. And he, I think with that he withdrew. So like, you know, when we move among others, uh, to some extent we have to uh, become a bit tough in the beginning. Don't show what you are in the, from the very beginning itself, especially when you are young. At my age, I need not be like that because people know me. I move around, you know, in the amongst people who know me, uh, where I'm also familiar with the people around me. Over there, there, there's no need to pretend. But in other cases, when you go for something, especially in your younger age, a kind of withdrawal, but it's a kind of, um, you know, indifferent. Slowly, uh, you just uh, make others. The men have women as soon. Well. So give them time uh, to learn what we are. Probability or probability that we'll be misunderstood early and so frank and open. Some men may misunderstand us. But at the same time, you have another option. You can very well feel let them. Let them. What's there? That kind of an attitude also sometimes, you know, save us. But maybe I'm a bit older compared to your age. And that could be the reason why I have all these experiences in my life, the mixed experiences where, you know, at my age or in my position, I can be really straightforward. But at the same time, I always know that glass barriers are there around me wherever I go. I have no hesitance in admitting what I feel right now. And another thing is, uh, you know, reading a lot, understanding a human or rather people a lot and treating a person as what he or she is. Uh, my uh, brother-in-law used to tell me, Dina, uh, one sh should be true to oneself. Uh, that is a policy which we can carry forward throughout our life. We should be true to ourselves. So then, you know, you need not show two faces at all. You can be, uh, what I might say, a serious person. At the same time, at the right moment, opportune moment, you can show what you are. Otherwise, I, I, I have a feeling. And because I have, I experienced that when I went for four month course or three month course in uh, Bangalore or Hyderabad, you know, I was very open and I used to talk to everybody, irrespective of the gender. And some of the men and some women also uh, misunderstood me or mistook me as a person who was easily available or something. I don't know. I was a bit affected. I was pretending as if, which I was not. So by the end of the course in Bangalore, as well as in Hyderabad, a few of my friends, friends in the sense, you know, when we, when they, you know, we, we simply become friends, that's our classmates. They came and told me, when we met you first, we thought that you are a highly affected personality. But now we know that you are the same from day one to this last day. So we actually missed the chance of getting closer to you more. We do regret. That's what they said. So that's why I told you, uh, being open, being uh, expressing what you feel like you are, there is a chance that people uh, misunderstand you. But if you don't bother what other people think of you, then don't think of it at all. That's my advice. And uh, being, uh, you know, working women will always have uh, to face or rather uh, will have uh, opportunity to, uh, to prove our mental, especially when you work. Uh, because as I told you, uh, I don't know whether uh, my opinion is relevant in this context or not. Um, through the media, uh, through the serials that we watch on TVs, society gets a feeling that working women are, you know, they get chance to become, they get more chances uh, to uh, to have some romantic affairs with the colleagues or co-workers. 
So that is a misconception uh, of the rest of the society, especially those women who do not go out to work. So that way, I don't know what to do. Uh, I'm so helpless uh, because I've seen uh, people uh, developing relationships, uh, romantic um, affairs and uh, good friendships and all among men and women. Uh, but um, back of back at the back, men uh, have uh, more uh, physical attachment than women in general exceptions are there. Of course, that's my experience. I don't know. I don't know to tell you the truth because uh, I was in the world of reading a lot, discussing a lot, always arranging and leading and, you know, uh, going on with the new strategies or, uh, you know, teaching extra time. Like I was a very busy bee. That's what my children, my students call me, a busy bee. So I never had much opportunity to interact with many others about their feelings. But still, generally, this is what I felt. I don't know. I have my own opinion. You can have your own. And another thing is, uh, you know, when women sit together, we can share many of our feelings. Better we open ourselves. That is always better. Uh, don't believe that I'm always in the right and she need not be. She is not. No. We all have our beliefs, our prejudices, our convictions. It need not be, uh, you know, true all the time because we also change a lot. What we thought in our adolescent uh, gave way to new experiences in our youth. And then we became, when we become old age, our uh, outlook in our youth changes to a different outlook. As you grow old, your outlook totally changes. So, uh, every, for ex I can uh, tell you an example in my life. When I read Anna Karenina in my 20s, I never wept for Anna. But in 35, 40, in my middle ages, when I read Anna Karenina again, I really wept. But now, in my 60s, when I read Anna again, I only sympathize. See how the outlook towards the same character or the novel has been changing over the years. So that's what we are made of. Uh, you know, there is a beautiful uh, stage is written by Shakespeare. He says what we do exactly, but our feelings like, uh, you know, uh, like in Two cities, yeah. Uh, Dickens says how you know, he actually quotes the uh, Bible to say that uh, what we did with adolescents, when we are an adolescent, we thought like an adolescent. When we are a youth, we, we are youth, we thought like a youth. Like we always change. Change is the only thing uh, that's permanent in life. So our attitudes may change. So in a group like this, there will be youths, there will be middle-aged, there will be old. You know, we can have our opinions, we can open up and we can share our feelings. We can have debates, of course. At the same time, it makes us think a lot about what we think, whether it is right or wrong, or whether it will change or not. People have told me that before divorce, they thought, Divorce was the only solution in their lives. But after divorce, though they married again, they feel that they wouldn't have before divorced their first husband. So that is what we do in our life. Uh, so a, a meeting, a gathering like this, of course, will make us more mature, will make our outlook change, and we will become more, uh, what I might say, more stronger in our personality. That's what I would like to say. And so uh, I, I think you may ask me questions and I'll be able to, try, I will try to, and I won't say I will be able to, I'll try to uh, share my feelings uh, on your questions. 
so um, I don't know whether I should declare that I have uh, uh, formally inaugurated uh, your Beyond the Glass Barrier, uh, Beyond the Glass Barriers 2021 uh, and the seminar. I don't know, but you can treat it if you want to. I would rather see, please accept my declaration as an inauguration. Otherwise, uh, you can ask or rather you can start the discussion. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, ma'am. It's an honor to have you here. We have a question, ma'am, and read that out. What is your advice to the budding women engineers to bring technological advancements in society like ours, where people's first level attitude is to oppose technological changes? Yes, yes. So, you have to learn a lot. You have to learn why you advise people to accept or use this technology. You should have an ample reason, a valid reason to support your proposal. And what are the benefits over the past ones, the present one over the past one? Benefits of new technology over the old technology that you should thoroughly learn with examples if you can. When you say something, support it with a living example. That is the best way. In corporation, when people come to, you know, to build uh, STP plants, I ask them, where can I go visit and see an STP that you have made or constructed? I went, we went in fact, personally to different places to see how an STP work before I could explain the same or I could give a campaign for the same to the people who are not willing to accept an STP plan. So that's my advice. I'll read out the next one, ma'am. Thanks for the insights from your own life. Do you think that women are generally risk adverse? Women are generally? Risk averse. Miss? Yeah, um, ma'am, Sharda here. I think the question was put by me. Uh, I was just checking. Uh, see, generally, there is a, uh, everybody says that women are risk averse, especially in terms of uh, when, you, uh, when you look at uh, industries and um, in their at least professional career, they are very reluctant to take any risk. Do you think that is right? What is your view on um, it? depends. It varies from person to person. There are people who have the willpower or the boldness or courage or fortitude or whatever you call it to take risk. You know, a woman's life is full of risk. Even uh, lighting the stove in the morning is a risk. Keeping the milk pot on the uh, stove and then waiting for it to boil is a risk. Don't we face all these kind of small, small risk in our life? We do. We do. So uh, that advice, that opinion is wrong. Many women are willing to take risk. But the thing is, in the workplace, people look at us suspiciously whether we would be able to do it or not. That kind of an attitude of the people around us actually make us reluctant to take risk. Otherwise, in my experience, we are ready to take risks than men. I have taken a number of risks in my life, my career, a number of them. So I wouldn't say uh, that, uh, you know, men used to say that we wouldn't have taken that risk that you have taken. So there are many women who are ready to take risks. That's my experience. Maybe in engineering, uh, you know, your physical uh, strength or physical um, flexibility is needed more. There you may, uh, uh, you know, be reluctant, but not in any other field. I I'll read out the next question, ma'am. How did the COVID times challenge your role? Oh my goodness, like everybody, uh, it was challenging for me. I, in fact, in as I told you, I took risk. I went around 
every corner everywhere in the city with a mask of course but at the same time i visited houses where everyone was stuck with covid keeping a distance i asked their whereabout and i told them don't worry but still the irony is that i got covid from my own home my son and his wife newly wedded they went for a class and that professor who took a class for them he was a very nice person but he had covid and these people did not know after removing the mask they spent half an hour talking to each other without wearing the mask back that and her family suffered i suffered less but still when others suffer that reflected suffering was more on me and on the 15th day when i came back to the office as a mayor you know i could see my deputy mayor my secretary and my health training chairperson you know they they were in a kind of a fit because they didn't know what to do like so they wanted me to sit in that chair so that they could move around and do the work so i took the challenge the real challenge and i believed that i had to suffer so much in my family because as a member as a mayor i had to undergo that kind of testing time soon after my recovery i ordered a kind of a mobile medical unit to go and check a patient really checking with the stethoscope that alone uh, make you go for a uh, for a scanning or for an x ray to know whether your lungs are affected so that's what we started and we actually started a covid the vaccine yetnam that we called kavajam 21 which was the first of its kind in india in india i would rather tell so so many challenges we had to undertake those days every one of my staff fell ill due to corona every single day you wouldn't believe that. there were seat which i never did people used to come in groups and i told them wear your mask don't be afraid talk to me i do wore a mask all the time i gave them sanitizer we faced it so boldly i should say not only me and my whole staff including the health department the service that they rendered during that time you cannot imagine what they did and that was the kind of a movement that i felt personally and i was a part of it that's all we have another question ma'am what gives you the courage to take those risk and how do you balance your work and family that's a tough question to be asked balancing your work and your family is really a challenge um because everyone needs your attention your husband and your children your brothers everyone your mother and then how can you keep a balance between both that was really difficult for me to tell you the truth especially after becoming i was a teacher trainer a tutor and i was a material producer for the government i used to write textbooks for i used to write and i used to supervise the writing of other people uh, in english textbook making the english textbooks from class 3 to high secondary plus 2 so you can very well imagine the kind of you know involvement i needed in my work so uh, during the vacation time we had to prepare the books you wouldn't believe as a cursory it was a, a lent period for us most of the days my children ate kanni and uppumanga chammandi can you believe i made curd rice and uh, egg omelet i never made chapatis because those days my staying servant would go and stay in her house for one mu- full month april for vishu and some festival in her temple so she used to go and stay for a full month in april so uh, that month was the busiest time for me but this is the way i managed that's one thing another thing uh, when i became a principal my attention was needed 24 into 7 365 days and uh, there were months together where i didn't take a single day off even on sundays 
I had to go to school because so much had to be done being a high secondary principal, which I did. That could be the one of the reasons why I was selected as a person to contest as a counselor. I don't know. The same way when I went to Nadaka school to make it uh, at the standard of international level, then again, I had to work up to 10, 30, 11 o'clock in the night. And I really suffered a lot because my daughter for in her, uh, you know, advanced pregnancy, she was telling me her child was not moving in her womb. I told her it might be sleeping. My sister-in-law is a gynecologist and uh, she was the consultant. So I, I told my daughter, you call uh, my sister-in-law and talk to her your problems. She didn't. She was highly depressed. His mother came at about 10 o'clock in the night. Every day when I wanted to lock my room at 6.30 or 7, people would come and say, teacher, this letter is to be made. This letter is to go tomorrow. Bro, I had to write each and every letter. There was no one to help me because it could have been, it could be in English. That's the reason. So that's what I did. And finally, when I took her on the 10th month, when I took her for a scan, the doctor told me her uh, uh, oxy, oxy, what is that? Uh, oxygen level is uh, hypoxia positive. That's what Dr. Surega said. Hypoxia positive. For one month, she had the growth of the baby was going back, retarding, because it was suffering from lack of oxygen. Immediately, uh, she underwent a cesarean and she gave birth to a child who was only 2 kg, 2.3 kg or something. And he was black and blue on his forehead and on his limbs with a very thin child. He was born. And, um, you know, it was very difficult for me to adjust. And even now, uh, you all know IUGR babies. My grandchild is like that. And I have a great guilt in me. Even as a mayor, I bear that guilt. And my only regret is that my two grandchildren are in my custody now. My daughter got a job in England. Uh, her husband is doing his PhD. And I have to look after these two grandchildren, one nine years, the other five and a half years old, a girl. Beautiful kids they are, good children they are. But as a mayor, I'm not getting time to look after them. I not even spend half an hour with them, talking to them. Maybe I'm there in the house doing so many things, answering their queries. But still, you know, as a grandmother, I feel so guilty that I can't spend more time with them. So balancing your profession and your family is difficult. Of course, it, unless you have your mother or somebody living with you or a very good, you know, staying servant, it would be really difficult. Yes, ma'am. I have another question, ma'am. What are your comments on new modes of work from home or work from anywhere? Should this flexible board should continue? How is this good for women? Suja, for women, it is a bit difficult. As I told you, unless you have your husband or your mother or your parents or someone who's responsible to look after the household work, it will be difficult for women because you have to cook, right? If your husband cooks, it's all right. And as we said, you know, we always speak about equality. What equality do we have? Simply wearing the same dress. Is it equality wearing a panda and a shirt like men? It's not equality. You're driving a car. It's not equality. It's the feeling that we all should have in our household about the work, the responsibilities of men and women together. So, uh, of course, if you have, if you, if you love to do, love to sit at home and do the work in the in the late hours, it's okay if you can do that. Otherwise, it may be difficult. So it depends. Uh, uh, or rather, it varies from person to person. Uh, what you feel, uh, what you experience in your life may not be the experience of your friend. It may be different. So that's what I feel. Yeah. If you can, you work from. But sometimes you feel. Working outside, working outside.
will be better because what you do. Suja, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. I was in the elevator. <laughs> can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yeah, ma'am. I was in the lift. Okay, okay, come. Now I have reached my office. So from my place of inauguration, reaching back to office at about six o'clock or five thirty or something. I don't know the exact time. <laughs> so this is what's happening. I have reached my office right now. Uh, if you if you if you look well, you can see the kind of you know stacks of files in my office and. Yeah, come on, say something. Thank you so I, much, ma'am. <laughs> I didn't have my lunch today so because of my busy schedule. Thank Still you for maintaining a smiley yes, face. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for finding time to spend us with us, ma'am. Even in between yeah, your busy schedule. And every word you spoke, ma'am, it was all part of reality and it was very relatable. And thank you for encouraging us uh, <laughs> to break those extra obstacles that we will face in our life. Thank you so yes. much, ma'am. Yes. Believe that we have the strength to cross or break any bar. Sija, this is what we have to believe. We are specially made. That's what I always believe about people. We are made so special that we can overcome anything. Never lose your control. Always be hopeful and be good personalities. Be just and honest so that we'll have that mental strength to face any kind of you know, eventual piece in our life. So shall I stop now, Suja? <laughs> Sure, no, ma'am. Thank you so much. Okay. So shall I leave the meeting? Ma'am, we would like to present you a virtual memento. Yeah. As a token of a gratitude and respect, ma'am. I've seen that. Good, good. It's a very good memento. I don't know what uh, uh, speciality that uh, space have in engineer. Anyway, thank you very much. I've thank accepted so your memento. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. I leave now? Sure, ma'am. Thank you so much. And now, it's time you have all been eagerly waiting the announcement of Rose Award winner. The award was constituted by the Women in Engineering Wing of IEEE Malabar subsection to honor women who have made outstanding contribution in engineering. The awardee should have made significant contribution to the community with her vision, creativity, and initiative. I would like to request Dr. Sabik Bibi, Principal, KMCT Women's College of Engineering, and Chair, IEEE Malbar Subsection, to do the honors and introduce to us the winner of recognition for the Outstanding Service in Engineering Award for the year. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Pooja. Uh, respected uh, Honorable Mayor, Dr. Pina Philip, uh, Ms. Sarada Jaikushan, I uh, chair IEEE Kerala section, Dr. S.D. Madhukumar, immediate past chair IEEE Malaba subsection, uh, Dr. Lilikuti Jacob, past chair of IEEE Malaba subsection, organizing committee members of BGB 2021, and my dear participants. So my duty is here to announce the winner of uh, the award. Before going into that, uh, I would like to brief about the award. Uh, the V Wing, Women in Engineering, Engineering Wing of IEEE Malabar subsection this year has constituted a new award to honor women who have made outstanding contributions in engineering. And the name for this award was given as uh, recognition for outstanding services in engineering. In short, a Rose Award. This award is given to a woman of distinction who has more than 10 years of technical management or administrative services and has sound knowledge, commitment to the profession, 
and to the society as a whole. The award is bestowed upon someone who has made significant contributions to the community with our vision, creativity, and initiative. The following aspects of the candidates uh, of the candidate are considered while choosing the awardee. She should have made an impact in a chosen field of endeavor, assisted others to be successful in their achievements, inspired and encouraged women to take part in shaping the future of their own lives and their communities, being innovative in the way that they approach challenges facing women and wider community. So these were the criteria. Uh, the selection process for this award is as follows. Members of IEEE Malabar subsection XECOM will give nominations of suitable candidates who deserves this award. And the awards committee of the MSS Malabar subsection will be finalizing the winner. So with great pleasure and honor, I would like to declare the first rose award decided by the awards committee. And it goes to Dr. Lilikuti Jacob, former professor, NIT Calicut, and senior member of IEEE. Congratulations, ma'am. Thank you, thank you, Shanta. So Lilikuti Jacob received BSc Engineering from College of Engineering Trivandrum, MTech from IIT Madras, and PhD from IIC Bangalore. She was with Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, South Korea, as postal uh, doctoral fellow. Was a visiting, visiting faculty at National University of Singapore. Was an exchange visitor at University of South Florida, USA. She was with NIT Calicut for 36 years and served in different roles, including head of department of ECE and dean uh, faculty welfare. She has guided 27 MS and PhD research scholars. She has highly cited researcher with more than 175 publications in international journals and conferences. She serves as an editorial board member, reviewer, and technical program committee member for a number of IEEE and ACM journals and conferences. She received Best Student Award from IIT Madras. Uh, Best Performer Faculty Award of NIT Calicut, Distinguished Engineering Teacher of Kerala, and Best Teacher Award of IEEE Kerala Section. She serves as an expert team member for NAC, NBA, and Mark the Ship Scheme of Government of India, and as a PhD examiner for NIT, IITs, and IAS. She is a life member of ISTE, Fellow of IET, Fellow of IEEI, and senior member of IEEE. I request you to accept this award from IEEE Malabar subsection for your valuable contribution to the society. Thank you, Dr. Sabik. Okay, I think it is my turn to uh, respond to uh, your selection. Okay, okay. Yes. A very good evening to you all. I got humbled when I came to know about the Rose Award for me. I thank the IEP MSS and its award committee for selecting me and I dedicate this great honor to all my students whom I have taught, guided and mentored during the past 36 years. Let me share with you some of the basic principles that have guided me at different phases of my professional life journey. When I started my teaching profession at NIT Calicut, then RSE Calicut, in the early 80s, I realized that research and continuous learning were essential to be a good academic. So I decided to pursue PhD at the Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, at that time, I had to make a choice whether to leave my two-year-old son 
with my parents or in-laws or to take him with me, of which I opted for the later. The basic principles that I guided me then were peak performance begins with you are taking complete responsibility for your life and everything that happens to you. Accept that you are where you are and what you are because of your own choices and decisions. After completing my PhD and returning in the early 90s, I developed at RSC Calicut the research facilities that I enjoyed at IASC, especially the internet facility. After four years of my PhD, I got an offer for postdoctoral fellowship at KAIST, South Korea. Again, I had to make a crucial decision to leave my family in India and go to Korea alone. At that time, I realized to achieve something that you have never achieved before, you must become someone you have never been before. To be all that you can be, you must dream of being more. To achieve the possible, you must attempt the impossible. After completing my postdoctoral fellowship and returning, I got an opportunity for a visiting faculty position at the National University of Singapore. Since it was for five years, I tried hard for school admission for my son at Singapore and also for a job for my husband so that I can have my family with me. By God's grace, I, could, I was successful in getting both and thus we could go all together. I made use of that opportunity because continuous personal and professional development is the springboard to peak performance. Nothing great is ever accomplished without persistence. We have to be willing to take risks and move out of our comfort zone in the direction of our dreams. Though I was pers persuaded by my friends to continue at NUS after five years of my uh, term there, I returned to NIT Calicut and made all efforts in the next 10 years to give back to my parent institution for all that I could achieve. Then I felt like switching back from administration to active research and decided to, I mean, after uh, serving, I mean, after doing 10 years of which five years, I fully got engaged in administration as a head of the department and uh, dean faculty welfare. I felt like switching back from administration to active research again. I decided for a sabbatical leave at University of South Florida, USA, for my academic revival and catching up with the latest happenings in my area of research. Okay, that, that was the, uh, the kind, I mean, the, the 30, 30 years of my, uh, I mean, three decades of my career life. Uh, of course, no, uh, now I have taken voluntary retirement from NIT Calicut. It's only for a, a short period. Uh, and now I have great plans in my life because I cannot leave, I mean, I cannot uh, uh, keep quiet. Uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, I would like to do uh, uh, something more, uh, which I have never done before. Uh, but of course, after a short break, which uh, this break I'm enjoying with my family, with my son, my grand, grand, grandsons. They are of three years and uh, nine months old. So I'm fully enjoying my grandkids now. Uh, but it's only a short break. Anyway, uh, I wind up with uh, uh, a few quotes uh, as advices to my younger sisters who are attending this workshop. Uh, these are the quotes which I would like to share with you. Go the extra mile in your job. There are never any traffic jams on the extra mile. Be clear about your goals. Be flexible about the process of achieving them. You are in the business of customer satisfaction. Your customer is anyone who depends on you or who you depend upon for success. 
be a team player support others and cooperate with everyone make your financial independence a primary goal in life and begin working towards it today it's quantity of time at home that counts and quality of time at work i repeat it's quantity of time at home that counts and quality of time at work don't mix them up peak performance women don't necessarily make the right decisions but they make their decisions right the last one peak performance comes from a feeling of continuous growth and development in your personal value okay i thank again iwl malwa sub section and the award committee of malwa sub section for giving me this uh, uh, great recognition and uh, uh, i i also thank all the participants of this workshop for the patient listening thanks thank you thank you very much thank you so much ma'am ma'am we would like to present you a virtual memento as a token of our gratitude and respect thank you for all your help support and initiatives ma'am technically as well as professionally it's an honor to have you here thank you ma'am thank you thank you so much thank you ma'am over to you hanan next i'm pleased to invite ms sarada jayakrishnan the chair of ieee kerala section a woman who won the shackles of ignorance and fought for women empowerment she believes that technology promising engineers and scaling up are the three aspects that determine the future of industries and societies ma'am will be delivering an inspirational talk on how professional activities and engagements have helped for her career excellence with all due respect may i invite ms sarada jayakrishnan chair of ieee kerala section and dgm terumo penpole to address this gathering over to you ma'am um thank you hanan uh, for the kind words uh, good evening good afternoon everybody uh, congratulations again to lilikuti ma'am somebody who has, who keeps inspiring us um for her meticulous work and also meticulous thoughts i must say thank you sabik um and uh, the malabar subsection for giving me an opportunity to be part of this event in fact when breaking the glass barriers was first um started in 2019 i still remember Uh, dr madhu kumar had invited me unfortunately i couldn't attend that was an in person event but uh, some some good parts of covid that we could attend from anywhere through uh, through zoom and other it platforms so you have been listening to two <laughs> star wars already and i'm sure you're all very inspired uh maya bina um, she actually spoke from the heart on different situations that she had faced not only um, while she was teaching as a teacher but also her current scenario i mean current job as a mayor which is something that we can all look ahead to because i think the challenge they face is it changes every day so you don't have you can't have a procedure or a, a sop for we call it the standard operating procedure in manufacturing we can't have that in a, when you are in positions like that of a mayor where things keep changing every day but i'll try to put a few points from my perspective and hope it will help few of the participants here i'm not sure it everybody will be enthused so uh, i am i i i mean i am basically an electrical and electronics engineer from college of engineering trivandrum i am a pass out of 91 batch so almost 30 years now though we still consider we are very youngsters 
30 years have passed. Um, I had uh, short stints in Bangalore and uh, in Delhi, uh, where I was primarily in uh, design and development uh, environment. And then in, in, um, uh, in um, I came back to Trivandrum in 98 for my personal reason, but I was lucky enough to get into an organization which was primarily looking into helping out uh, patients or manufacturing medical devices. Um, I, I, I always aspired to be a doctor, <laughs> but then couldn't crack the entrance those days. Uh, I could only get uh, into Ayurveda, Ayurveda, Ayurveda medicine, then I thought, my second option was engineering, but I got electrical, which was my first choice. So I decided to move that. I'm so glad I did that. I think I'm more cut out to be an engineer than a doctor primarily. And then I had the good fortune to be part of a, of a college um, which, has, which, has, which has, I'll say still, the best systems uh, for engineering education in, um, in Kerala, in India, and some of the greatest uh, teachers. I was lucky enough to be part of Dr. Gomadi Murlidharan's um, um, you know, um, mentorship because she was heading our department when I was studying there. Um, I triply, I have known about IEEE in my college days, but I was never a member because in those days, uh, the membership fee was not something that was, that could be taken by uh, us. I come from a middle class family with both of my parents working. So, uh, but we were always part of the programs that were conducted by Gomadi Ma'am and others. And um, we had the opportunity uh, to listen, to hear, to get to see the uh, various journals that come in as part of uh, IEEE and to know about it. It was long after that I became, I got into my career that I really uh, started volunteering from IEEE, for IEEE. I came back to Trivandrum and uh, I was, uh, I joined the company, uh, Terramo Penfall. I was part of their production team earlier, then moved on to, um, I mean, have moved into uh, looking into servicing, servicing of the equipment, um, had a short stint in marketing, then moved on to, um, uh, you know, into the full operations, which included, um, included design and various facets of the product. And then currently I'm now into uh, heading the quality of uh, one of the largest manufacturing plants of medical devices, basically the blood bags. So um, I could relate to many of the challenges and points that were being mentioned by uh, both being a teacher and also Lilikuti ma'am where through our journey, uh, we learn and then it is always good to listen uh, to the experiences of others because we don't, everybody don't have to reinvent the wheel. That is the advantage of listening to experienced person. When I moved out of college, um, there was this option to look at, um, come, I mean, um, mastering in computer science or moving into a, a kind of research world. But I knew that I was not cut out for that. I was more of a material where probably I needed to be active. I needed to touch things. I need to feel things. I need, needed to be with people. And then um, I realized that manufacturing would be my best forte, and I really love it. Um, and I must be, pr I'm really proud that I think in IEEE Kerala section, I'm one of the few women who is part of um, manufacturing um, organizations. Um, and uh, I think that will be one area where girls have to really uh, pitch in, because that's one area where 
we as competent persons having the best of uh, you know uh, our, our um, ability for understanding situations you know what you call the situational leadership what we actually do at our home it comes naturally to us you know the situational leadership that is best utilized in a manufacturing shop floor so i really urge everybody all the little girls over here who are coming out of college to at least look at the options that are given uh, on a manufacturing uh, i mean when you are in a manufacturing domain now few of the things that i thought would be helpful um, as a kind of uh, you know introspection and also probably which could entice few of you to think are one of the i, I asked the question about are women risk averse in the context of your profession generally we are we are we are risk averse now why do i say that i'm pretty sure that um, when there is a call for a uh, for an opportunity job opportunity um, in the i mean either through your different portals or in your existing organization we would always go through the job uh, there will be a job profile right uh, where you are supposed to i mean uh, they will be calling based on the job profile now we would go through if there are there are 10 different um, responsibilities that need to be done we will go through each and tick each one of them and say oh i am not sure am i audible okay we say oh i am not sure i am not sure maybe i can maybe i'll make 50% here maybe i'm 100% here and then we'll think a 10 times before applying for a job our favorite other gender would look at the 10 yeah tick two and say ah we have two that's okay we'll apply for the job and then see we'll learn on the way that is one thing that generally we um i mean um girls and ladies generally we we need to be perfect we always look at perfection and see that anything that is not 100% we don't go for it so it's like um you know we we become our own critic and then take it only if you are 100% sure sure be it a problem that is given in your in your shop floor or in your uh, work environment or in your college it's generally the boys who say yes we can do it why is it so why is it so because number one we always think that oh are we really competent are we really i mean do we have the enough material do, have we learned the there are so many questions that come back to us it is generally for the other gender that they decide to learn on the way we need to step up we need to step up ask for help and then learn on the way otherwise we are never going to reach what we want to now this uh, the the um the, i mean the theme of uh, the conference is very very interesting as maya bina was also mentioning what is the glass barrier that we are trying to break it is different for different people some people some ladies it may be that you need to be at the i mean and pass part of a board of directors maybe that's your aspiration for some it may be just that okay i need to balance my work and i need to balance my children children studies and i can have a steady income maybe that is what you are aspiring for whatever may be the case unless you decide and go take some risks nothing will happen everything finally happens from you nobody else can help all the talks you hear all the quotes you read all the books you read i'm sure many of you would have already read 
um, uh, many, many books written by famous women, uh, you know, um, women entrepreneurs, women, um, um, I mean, who have excelled in the career. Whatever you do, unless you decide to take the risk, the first step, nothing will happen. Now, why do I say this very, very, um, very, very um, from my heart is I have taken many risks different ways. So different people have different um, forums or different opportunities for taking risk. Now, when I came back to uh, Trivandrum, I wasn't sure whether um, what kind of environment I wanted to work because I was one person who wanted to get out of Kerala and work in other regions because I wanted to understand the culture of different worlds. When I came back to Kerala and joined this organization, the only thought that I had is, okay, I'm going to help a patient by providing a blood bag. And when I joined that organization, being a startup, we didn't have any, for six months, I didn't have a salary, okay? At that time, it was a big risk that I had taken, but thanks to my, um, um, my husband, my family who supported, Though we needed the money, I decided and we decided that this is something that I'm going to enjoy and I'm going to be able to deliver. It's not very easy to forego six months of salary that to in a new organization, you're not sure if it's going to, if it's going to really come out in the way it is. Two years down the line, a Japanese company, Teruma Corporation, took the company and we never looked back. And I never looked back. I had one of the best vendors in the organization, Mr. C. Patma Kumar, who was the then executive director, who actually, actually led me into various areas. And I mean, whatever I've reached is much thanks to him too. So when you, when you, when you are, um, so I, I mentioned the point that you must ask for help. This is something, again, we ladies think, Oh, is it right to ask? It is good to ask. Should we ask a question? Do we feel like, oh, we don't know. That's why you are asking. There are a lot of samshem. But unless you ask, how can anybody help you? So that's the first thing. First thing is, if you decide you're going to go ahead, go ahead, learn on the way, and ask for help. Okay? So, but when you ask for help, you should also, so, um, you must have all heard about mentor, mentee, you should have mentors, uh, the mentors will coach you, and the mentees are supposed to learn. It will all happen well if the mentee also decides to learn. See, many organizations like mine to have structured programs where we are, I mean, we are asked to pair with a mentor or um, sometimes a mentee comes to us if we are uh, seniors. But everything will happen only if the mentee decides, yes, I'm going to learn. Okay? So take the risk, ask for help, learn. Learn, learn, learn. So in 2006, I was, um, I mean, I was happily um, kind of um, having two, three portfolios. I had my bunch and I was happy. I could deliver products to the customer. And then, but somewhere down the line, I thought I had to, I had to get some more skills because I was going more into managerial roles and coming out of the technical side. So I, I mean, I got the opportunity to take, um, postgraduate diploma in um, business management from XLRI Jamshedpur. So again, while the 18 months was very, very crucial, having learning, I had a small kid. I mean, I was working full time. My husband was in Delhi because he couldn't get a transfer to come down to Trivandrum. There was a lot of struggles, but, but, of course, I had my mother to support me. She was with me, as ma'am was earlier mentioning. But that really helped me to go into my marketing stint. I had a three years in marketing post that. Now, why was the marketing stint important? 
Why was the marketing still important? Sabik, you can stop me if the time is set because I am some side chodang. I am going to parnoon de ilke. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> okay. So yeah. Okay. So why was the marketing still important? Now, as engineers, we are all trained to be solution providers. And I keep saying this every time. See, we are all trained to think in a way to provide solutions for, it could be problems, it could be challenges, it could be taking up an opportunity, but we come out with solutions. Whatever kind of solution, let it be a service solution, let it be a product solution, let it be a consulting solution, whatever, we are experts in that, we are trained. From the engineering curriculum and the rest, we are molded like that. Now, when I got the marketing stint, I actually started meeting my customers, which are doctors. Doctors in hospitals across India and in some parts of the globe too. Okay, I had opportunities to visit in uh, South Asian hospitals too. Now that really opened my eye. Till that time, I also used to say that, okay, we must always look at your customers, think what the customer wants and deliver accordingly. You have to always think customer first, et cetera, et cetera. But it was all just jargon. When I came to the marketing uh, stint, that is when I realized that many a times we think we are doing the best but that may not be the best for the customer. That may not be what the, uh, the doctor wants or the customer wants. Now, unless you know what the customer really wants, how can you provide the product or the solution or the service that he needs, he or she needs? So it's very, very important that be it any organization. I'm not saying you have to be in a marketing role. No, that's not what I'm trying to say. Be it any, any organization you are going to be part in your career or in, as a startup or as a teacher, always remember that there is, there is a customer at the other end and you're doing only for them. You are only, customer is a king. I hope everybody knows Mahatma Gandhiji's famous words that customer is the king. He still remains, he or she still remains the king. Unless the customer is there, we are not there. Any service you take. If it, teachers like you, like many of my uh, friends over here, without the students, they don't have anything to do. For organizations like me, without the doctors, we don't have anything to do. So it's primarily the customers that you need to look. And if you have to look at the customers, you need to have the listening skills and the empathy to understand. Now that's a great advantage for we women. We are very, very empathetic. At times we get over empathetic, don't do that. I, I did hear Mayor Bina mentioning that we shouldn't be over emotional and over empathetic. But that is one skill that really helps us to be good players, to understand your customer. So recapping, Taking up risks, asking for help, learn, continue learning, understanding your customer. Now, what did IEEE do to me? Right? What did IEEE do to me? IEEE is one platform where you have, you know, uh, you have all the uh, what should I say? All the experience, if you're an active volunteer, if you're an active volunteer, I'm not talking about just being a member for the sake of being a member. And uh, maybe for your, if you're in academics, you may have some grades and then you may get some uh, maybe promotions or something like that. But if you're an active volunteer, you get to see the whole spectrum of being in a career through your interactions in IEEE. Now, I have, uh, I have mentioned this in many forums that if you're an active volunteer, a student volunteer, you actually become part of many programs. And uh, when you conceive, you go through, um, um, you know, promoting the product, 
you sell the sell the program or conceive the program sell the program to your teachers you go through the whole spectrum of doing the program you you talk to your customers which are other members ieee members or external parties and then you get a feedback the whole cycle of a uh, uh, um, uh, career comes through in your in your interactions with ieee i've had great opportunities to network with the best of the best available in india and abroad i've also noticed that ieee is though we say women in engineering there is a separate wing and we have many many uh, you know um, many many verticals this is one forum where your voice will be heard for sure whatever gender you are gender agnostic i have noticed that i have always gained that and you interact with students you interact with young professionals you interact with senior members you interact with very senior highly senior members lmag life members so what do you learn from these interactions you learn that you need to listen you need to listen you need to entice ideas and when you listen and ideas come up then you get the best out of whatever interaction you have this is something that you can take directly to your career directly to your career no doubt about it because in any stage of your career you have to be a good listener you have to be a team player you have to understand the other persons i mean uh, you need, you you should be able to understand the other person's views these are all things that you get to get when you are part of ieee when you are an active volunteer the advantage in ieee is you don't have i mean you don't have such a organized structure as a company or a or a uh, i mean uh, you may not have so much of you can always do trials here much better than in an organization so whatever learnings you get you can immediately take to your career um um so in late um in my i mean when i uh, i mean late in my i i shouldn't say late in my career but almost 7 years back i i mean i was always thinking myself that i am not very good at you know um uh, good at what they call the quality system per se okay and especially in a medical device but then i got an opportunity to take the lead of my organization uh, heading the quality and regulatory aspects of the company now for a medical device those of you at least who have heard and read the regulations are very very stringent and not only that for manufacturing you have to have very stipulated conditions which is very very difficult to be maintained and any mishap that happens will actually directly affect your patient so that was a real challenge that i took up i am very glad i took up there were many many in my my peers some of my um, you know superiors also asked me is it really cut for you do you want to take the plunge but i think i took the decision and that really helped me to become what i am now now where did i get this courage to take the plunge i'll say it is from my active volunteering in ieee because that's one area where i have lot of um, you know uh, i have a group where i could i could use as sounding boards they are from different areas not from my own industry so i can always they'll give me different perspectives so that's another advantage when you are part of ieee that you can always get different perspectives from different industries different colleges different systems not only within india but abroad and understand before i mean you can take a calculated risk now let me come to my first point again i said you should always take risk but calculated risk that is something that we have to be very very clear now this is not only for girls but is also equally for boys that whenever you take a risk we have to take a calculated risk now for taking a calculated risk we have to have so much of information so much of data you must understand the pros and cons before deciding 
on going forward. So um, I think in a nutshell, what I was trying to say is, while, um, while you may think that the professional volunteering in organizations like IEEE can only be done uh, when you have sufficient time, that is when you're after your career, when you're free, you can do, no, that's wrong. You, it is always best and it is what is supposed to be to run in parallel along with your career, along with whatever you're doing now to fully utilize forums like IEEE or other societies where you are uh, engaged with, depending on what is your interest area. There, may, there are with many other forums which could be used. Uh, for those, who, those of you who are not familiar with IEEE, um, as Sabik was mentioning, um, IEEE Kerala section is one of the largest sections in India, close to 12,000 members uh, currently. In fact, last two days we had clocked 12,000 thanks to the many volunteers and also uh, meaningful programs like the one that is happening now that had happened. And uh, I'm sure anybody who had volunteered along with IEEE with a real sense has gained not only professionally, but also personally. One last bit, IEEE is, I think, the only organization where you have the technical stream, you have the professional vertical, and also we always have a humanitarian angle to whatever we do. Advancing technology for humanity, that's the tagline. So there are three verticals which could go really in parallel. And that is something that as professional engineers, we always have to look at. Finally, we, we have all gained from our society. And when the uh, when colleges like NIT, like College of Engineering Trivandrum, molds us to be engineers, we are supposed to give back to the society too. And that is where you can actually merge IEEE and your career together to be the best. Uh, I think I've covered a few of the points that I thought of speaking. Um, there were many points which were already covered my, by um, um, Mayor Bina already, so I didn't want to uh, touch upon those. Um, I hope you had uh, you had gained a few points which you could probably look up later, have interactions, and then gain. All the very best for the two days of, um, I mean, uh, interactions. I see that tomorrow there is going to be a very, very um, good panel of uh, uh, for a panel discussion uh, with a very, very latest theme. Finally, please understand that we all need to be leaders in our own realm. There is no woman, men, etc. Okay, nobody says a woman doctor, right? Only we say woman engineer. So let's get beyond that and see that we are all engineering professionals, engineering leaders at, the, at our own levels. So all the very best for everybody who has joined. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, ma'am. As a token of our gratitude and respect, we will love to present you a virtual memento. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your valuable time and presence, for sharing your thoughts and opinions with us, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Pooja. Thank you. Thank you. Gratitude is not only the greatest of virtues, but the parent of all others. May I call upon Dr. Anu Meni Chaku, Chair of Women in Engineering, IEEE Malabar subsection to propose the vote of time. Over to you, ma'am. A very good evening to all and everyone who's listening to us in this BGB conference. So we are really glad that you are here. And for me, this last one and a half hours that I was sitting and listening has been very inspirational. It is really good for us, though Madam said, Shadda ma'am said, we all are leaders in our own realms. The experience of learning from other leaders make us go without reinventing the wheel again. I think uh, the experiences that uh, Bina Madam said, Lilikuti Ma'am said, and Sharda Ma'am said, have all enriched our lives. And no words can actually thank for the excellent thoughts they have spoken. Every word that was spoken was directly from the heart. 
I felt like when the when the honorable mayor Dina teacher was speaking and as she was narrating her very personal experience of uh, her uh, child and her family and the regret and all it was just like we were belonging to the same family and we were listening to something so close to our heart so at that time i was also thinking like you know as women as we struggled with our families we see the experiences of our people who have walked before us and there is lots and lots to learn so our honorable mayor has actually given us a lot of pointer how she has balanced she has gone to the other extreme where she has worked really hard to be the person who she is and as uh, as women we can take that lesson and go that extra mile and give back to the society from whom we have taken a lot so at this moment from our, as on behalf of the organizing committee of bgb 2021 in absence i would really like to thank dr beena philip for the talk she gave from the heart for every single word she has spoken the perspective she talked to us it's like you know like a of the i really loved the part where she, she took the word how our perspective changes with years right that experience comes only if, as sisters we come together and learn from each other's experience so she was essentially giving us the whole idea behind beyond beyond glass barriers this is not put as a technical conference but an opportunity for women to collaborate with each other so in our absence i propose thanks to dr bina philip now uh, i'd like to thank uh, in uh, inspirational talk given by dr uh, madam sharada madam she through her rich career from her she also was again speaking to us from her heart she has actually shown us like how her career has gone and how she has taken that decisions and it it like you know as she said as a woman as a family lady i am always risk averse i find it sometimes difficult i think a lot and i think from her i have to take that lesson to jump to plunge into calculated risk and only if you take calculated risk you can make a difference and that difference not only comes to the society around us but also for these dear ones the children whom we are rearing for our students to do much more for the society i think uh, for those people who didn't know i triply much ma'am has given a very excellent introduction into what the possibilities of it are and the possibilities can only be gained if we do active volunteering as she has suggested right so let's all like you know in the malabar sub section let's all who have gathered together we see a lot of students uh, let's get into some active volunteering and as she said meaningful programs that can really enrich us thank you ma'am for taking your time we missed you in the last uh, physical bgb but thank you ma'am for making it a point to be with us be relaxed and be with us from the beginning to end thank you so much ma'am thank you anu let, let me thank uh, lilikuti ma'am also in her absence lilikuti ma'am also has uh, she is actually uh, doing an accreditation today so she is in a college in tamil nadu but she has just set apart the time to come with us and acknowledge and tell us what her heart thoughts are there again she told us a lot of nice uh, quotations like that one quotation that really struck me was the quality of time in your work and quantity of time at home sometimes we manage to mix up both there is a lot of quantity of time we do at work we spend a lot of time and then at our home quantity and quality suffers together but let's take it from her as uh, she was a senior and she was i have seen her observed her how actively she has participated in her volunteering she has been the chair for different itpli conferences every time she is just running around for administrative duties let's learn from her and in her absence let me take this opportunity to thank her for coming here accepting the award from us and also sharing her valuable life experience sharing to her like telling us how she has made it so far So, so that was the guest room outside and now it's my turn to acknowledge all the hard work that has been put in by our, our own bgb organizing team sabik sir he is the chair of the iwpli mss section so he is behind the whole scene always encouraging us asking questions to make sure that we are all in track and doing the honors of uh, announcing the mss rose award thank you sir for being here and uh, announcing the rose award thank you for all your encouragement sir thank you thank you anuman uh, madhukumar sir dr madhukumar sir he is uh, 
he's my personal guide phd guide and he has been an inspiration for me for all the things that you do always a pleasant person to approach to any problem he will make it very light and throughout this organizing committee meetings he was a dean student welfare lot of or lot of uh, different task he was taking but even at midnight 10 o'clock and 10 o'clock he just dropped in to make sure that things go fine thank you so much mother sir thank you for mother sir for for introducing the mayor to us and all, arranging for the mayor stock thank you very much and there are a lot of people behind the scene i'm not going to mention each one of them thank you organizing team we are together as a team in this game and we have not ended tomorrow we are going to still rock and not last but not the least you the whole thing is made a success by our participants here for their patient listening and their questions and their being here means a lot to us so let me thank you on this day one we are actually finishing before time so please make sure that you are coming there tomorrow also tomorrow also we have a lot of interesting lessons for you to take home and interesting talks that are going to come so thank you guys for being here for being the support and making sure that this program is a success thank you one and all thank you over to you puja and hanan i forgot to thank you you have been really working hard and making sure that everything in the flow puja and hanan a special word of thanks to you and over to you thank you so much sir Sure. Thank you, ma'am. As we conclude the first day of Beyond Glass Barriers 2021, it is an honor to have you all here, and thank you for your valuable participation and time. And tomorrow we have the paper presentation contest with exciting prizes and the panel discussion with the eminent personalities: Dr. Maria Francis, Assistant Professor, IIT Hyderabad; Aisha Nasia. project and sports management professional operations expert strategy and growth facilitator ashwadi dinur tedx speaker educator psychologist and trainer co-founder of samatva center for excellence and asha chakho jot relationship manager tcs it was a pleasure to have you all here thank you you may all leave a meeting and we'll see you tomorrow until then take care thank you, thank you everyone stay safe thank you thank you ma'am Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.